Howdy everyone, my name is Griffin Furlong. I'm a professional civil engineer. And in today's video, I wanna show you how a civil engineer reads a survey. It is absolutely critical that all young engineers and even developers and contractors know what they're looking at when they're reading a survey, especially from the civil engineering mind. There are a handful of items that I typically walk through, starting from just a basic high level set of items, all the way down to the engineering gritty stuff like drainage and utilities and easements. But I'm ready to dive into it. So let's get to it. All right, here I have a survey and obviously you see a lot of grayed out stuff. I, ha I had to redact a lot of this information. And just to let you guys know how important a survey is, I mean, it's one of the first things that we need to actually begin our work. I mean, yeah, we can do conceptual site planning and whip together some stuff with a parcel boundary or just general line work from like, let's say Google Earth. But at the end of the day, we need an official boundary survey generated by a surveyor. The reason why this is important is because it's an official legal boundary. And if this boundary is somehow wrong, then there could be litigation because you could be encroaching other people's property or building upon someone's right of way. It can get messy. Now here I've made a little list of things that I look for as a civil engineer whenever I'm handed over a survey. So one of the first things that I look for is, is it signed? Is it a signed and sealed survey by an official surveyor? or is it a draft? Sometimes surveyors will just send over a preliminary draft. That way we can give it a review, the developers can review it. So when you're looking for this information, there's usually some sort of surveyor certification up here or down there. So just see if it's signed. If it's a draft, you're gonna wanna understand when you're gonna get the final version. Number two, is it an Alta? was title pulled. Now, what is ALTA? An ALTA is American Land Title Association survey. And typically what happens with this is a title company will pull all easements, right of way, and encroachments, encumbrances, and legal description tied to the deed. This is a very common survey and it's often required for lenders and attorneys when you're doing commercial real estate deals because you're technically describing the legal and physical condition of the site. So, Typically when you get an Alta, the title exceptions will be all on the front page. And basically it's listing out a whole bunch of items that, that have happened throughout history, whether it was a right of way deed, whether there was an easement agreement, you know, anything that might have a restriction on the property or things to be wary of before you actually buy this property. Because for instance, guys, if I go over to here and I know we're diving into the engineering already, but I, I see this one thing on our property and it's this 20 foot sanitary sewer easement. I mean, we gotta know what is underground and what is on our property that will affect our development. Next basic thing I look for is the scale and if there's topo, because not every boundary survey has topo. A lot of times you might have to request this separately. However, as a civil engineer, I really want the topo. So let's try to find the scale. It's usually in the title block and I know I've grayed everything out, but the drawing scale is one inch equals 20. I'm losing track on the numbers here, but I always look for a datum and typically you have a horizontal and vertical datum. So let's try to find that. Usually it can be in the general notes. The datum for the site was established utilizing global positioning system. So it was used, so GPS was used. North American datum, 1983 state plane coordinate system of Georgia West zone. The vertical reference frame is North American vertical datum, 1988. So the vertical datum is pretty standard there. It's typically NAVD, always be cautious if it's in GVD or in AVD because there is a discrepancy there. There's a conversion factor between the vertical elevations. Now, the reason why the horizontal datum is important is because when you're setting up all of your CAD, you want to make sure that you're in the right datum. Another thing that I completely glossed over was I always look for the special flood hazards. So typically the surveyor will put on the FEMA flood hazards, you know, what zone it is, zone X, zone A, zone AE. Doesn't seem like it's in any sort of special hazard here. Also, nothing's really highlighted. Typically, the surveyor will hatch the area or put some sort of delineation of the FEMA flood line. Last but not least, the last basic check that I do is, you know, are there any easements or existing features? And I'm seeing a handful of existing features that will kind of dive into the engineering part of it, but I'm noticing that there's something here. It looks like a drainage inlet because I'm seeing a 24 inch HDPE pipe. It's pretty typical. You'll see HDPE or RCP. Those are very typical materials for a drainage pipe. 
PVC is very common for your sanitary or water pipe. And I'm noticing that we have an eight inch PVC sanitary sewer there. And then we got some drainage all cutting through our site. So it's just very important that we're cautious of, you know, what's within our site here. Okay, I just noticed this too. So my bad for skipping ahead guys, but if you weren't noticing, this darker blue line is our boundary. And do you see how there's all these northings and eastings here? And then you see how there's a length. That's because a surveyor is usually using some sort of theodolite or a trimble. And they're basically going out and identifying each of these corners. A lot of times they'll be like little monuments, pins, rods, you know, it'll be some sort of item out in the field that they'll actually be able to connect the dots of the property. And a lot of times they'll have to use old plat books. They'll have to use old records, anything that they can find to establish this boundary. And not to hop all around, but my mind does wonders whenever I receive a survey. I mean, I am examining every inch, every little thing I can. So I'm noticing this site area. This is really important. It's 1.002 acres. It's not quite exactly an acre, the 43560. As you're developing your plans, make sure that you're referencing this site area exactly. All right, I think I'm ready to dive into some of the engineering checks that I do. So one of the first things that I look for is all of the utilities. So what will be my utility connections? Let's start with sanitary. And typically there will either be some sort of stub out to the site. This actually happens to be a master development where a master developer has come in and has developed a whole bunch of acres of land and they are leasing or selling these little one acre parcels to a buyer, like a restaurant or a bank or someone. So typically some sort of stub is provided in these sort of situations. But here, it looks like there's a whole main that we could potentially connect to. So let me zoom into this. I'm seeing that there's an eight inch PVC, which is definitely a large enough size for any sort of like small restaurant bank. I mean, that's that's pretty standard size for a, a sanitary main in a master development or even in a large residential community. I'm thinking a bank, a bank does anywhere between like a four inch PVC to a six inch, but four inch PVC is, is usually the standard. Now, typically when I'm looking at all of these sanitary manholes, I really need to understand the rent and then the invert. So in here, they don't really label it an invert. I don't love that. They just say top and out. I'm going to assume that out is the invert here. So this pipe is roughly, let's call it nine feet deep in the ground, not assuming the, you know, the whole size of the pipe, the eight inches. So it's about nine feet deep, which that's pretty good for any sort of connection that we'd have to make. Let's kind of keep going here. So we have the top at 855 in and then out 847 so it gets a little bit deeper we're going from 854 elevation to 847 so let me set this scale sometimes i just like understanding the slopes of things and going so 130 feet okay that's sloping almost six percent i mean it makes sense because our top is at 863 and that rim is 855 i mean there is a significant drop from this property boundary all the way to our entrance so that's just another thing to look for, but I'm kind of skipping ahead. I mean, already I feel good about the depth of this sanitary, even if we did for some reason have to remove some of it or make a tie-in, like a Y connection there. What about water though? We need some sort of water service. So I'm typically trying to see if there is a water service or an existing meter that was stubbed out to the site. That's typical with master developments, but I'm not really seeing anything called out. I'm seeing a hydrant there, which is good. Let's keep going. I wonder, is this water main even called out? Really like to know the size. I don't see any sort of size here. Mm, I don't see the size, guys. So that's always something that I am looking for. And if it's not in the legend, I mean, that's gonna be one of the first things that I ask the surveyor. So I typically write a whole list of questions to the surveyor down. That way we're just, you know, ensuring that we're picking up everything that we need. But it's also good that we have another hydrant here because typically with these small commercial projects, you need about 400 linear feet from the hydrant all the way up to the building. And that's a linear path, you know, from the roadway, like how a fire truck can access it. All right, so we've covered sanitary and water. So my only question to the surveyor is, you know, what's the size of that water main and if they need to go pick it out again. Or some of these questions can be answered to a local city or county. 
a lot of them will have the utility maps for the project so I can get it there or I can request as built from the city. Let's see, what else do we got? So we always need to know the drainage and the topography. So what I'm looking at here, I'm always trying to understand how the site drains. And I can definitely notice immediately that we have a high point right here on the property because all these contours are leading towards the front here. And it technically makes sense because we have a drainage inlet here at a low point. It wouldn't make sense if this inlet was at the high point water always flows downhill. But let's see what elevation we're at right here. So we're at around 867. So this contour represents 867. That means that this contour is 866. I wish these contours were labeled, but it is what it is. All the way down to our tie-in of around 856, 857. So the first thing that I'm kind of thinking about is my time of concentration in, in my basin. So as the engineer, we got to put together a pre-development flow map and calculate all of the runoff of this area, either into this inlet or it keeps going. And, you know, I don't see any other inlet. Okay, 857, 855. Okay, so it really just sheet flows and hits all of the sidewalk and goes into the public right of way. So <laughs> I'd be curious if it's kind of swampy out there. You know, and since we have about 10 feet of drop from here to there. I mean, that is a decent amount of drop across this area. I mean, we should be able to make it work with the site plan. I mean, it depends how it is, but we just have to be very cautious of, of how we're sloping up because, I mean, how many feet is that? With our driveways, we really don't want to slope up too much. So that's across 231 feet. It's about 4%. That's not even that bad. So I'm always thinking about you know, how these cars are going to be turning into this site. And we could utilize this existing access. Always look for an existing access way and make sure that the access conforms to your local jurisdiction's requirements. Because sometimes it needs a certain radii for the turn in or a certain width. And since this is part of a master development, it should be fine. It should be around 20 or 24. Okay. So it's close to 20. So a lot of boxes are being checked. I mean, the site doesn't look too crazy, but I mean, this is a lot of real estate right here that we're losing out on, especially if we can't build on top of the easements. So I'd be really curious, you know, how we're laying this out in the site plan. And perhaps we, we don't even use any of this area and we fit whatever we want you know, all in this little piece here. But an acre should be large enough. And this is definitely wide enough to build, you know, like a drive through with a building and associated parking. But I mean, this is the first step. Okay, what else are we looking for engineering wise? Typically from an engineering standpoint, I'm also trying to look for any sort of, is there any power, existing transformers? I'm going around here and I can't find anything yet. I don't see like any light poles or transformers picked up. And that might actually be a conversation with the master developer on how they plan to bring in power to the site. I see something right here called LP. Maybe that's a light pole. Okay. So there is a light pole. Okay. And they do have standard symbols here for power pole, guy wire, power line. You know, one really cool thing about Bluebeam is that you can go to the search bar and you can actually search for a visual. So let's say if I was looking for an electric transformer, I can go up to here to get rectangle, draw it around this guy, and now Bluebeam will search for this icon, which is just so cool. So let me hit search. And then it looks like our results down here was just in our legend. So based on the search and even my skim through, I don't see any electrical transformer, but it looks like there's some power lines down there. I think I'm about done. You know, there's probably a few more situations that we could dive into and maybe I can make it into a part two of showing a couple of different surveys. That way we can see how different surveys can be. I think learning how to read a survey is one of the most important things that you can do as a young civil engineer because the quicker that you can identify any sort of existing features on the site and the quicker you are to notice if you have all of the right utilities and drainage systems in place, the better you will be as a civil engineer to alert your client of any risk of the project. That's all I have for today, guys. Hope you guys learned something new and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.